forgive our sins. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome live. Uh, we're a bit late at this time, and uh, welcome live to our uh, Zoom. And therefore, as from Christ is the head fellowship. We thank God that indeed Christ is the head. You know, he rules over all. And this body will thrive because we proclaim only the head. Christ is the head of this fellowship. And I hope and pray you do always confess in your life that he'll be the head. Because, because God created us in his image and we are redeemed by the blood of Christ. And so therefore we must live like it. Because you know what Jesus said that he's the head of the church. And then he says this. You know, I upon this rock, I will build my church. And he's talking about himself. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No one, not even the creatures above, below, not any man would be able to conquer anything of that Jesus actually put and built in. Amen. So today we thank you. We're a bit late because of technical difficulties, but nevertheless, we are here to preach you. The good news every Sunday. Some good news are good to actually continue to fire us up. And some may be appearing to be a bit rebuking and confronting. But nevertheless, God wants to preach it. And God wants to send us a message, including myself. Because so us will be in alignment daily as God reminds us that we are not always going to be good in our walk. But there will be challenges, but nevertheless, we must focus on what Christ is doing and also opening into our hearts. So today is a beautiful, beautiful topic. And I love this. This is something that the Holy Spirit addressed when I experienced his empowering glory, 1994, up to this time that I'm still carrying that fire, revival fire. And I thank God that even in the most oddest challenges of my life the lord holy spirit has been so faithful to keep me and continue to remind me to preach he called me to preach and teach and so here am i with this very beautiful topic that he wants us to understand because in this is the secret of god wherein he unravels his own personal secrets to you and mine as being part of his body so amen so here he comes so our title today is pure in heart, all right? So not pure in your denomination, not pure in your, uh, you know, dress up, not pure in uh, your workplace, but pure in your own heart. You see, Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 8, very short, but there are many that entails to this, which I have actually discovered. He says this. Blessed are the pure in heart. That's your heart. That's my heart. For they shall what? See God. Right. This one is short. And seeing God in that uh, you know, scriptures has a lot of meaning. It's not only talking about when you die, you'll see him. Because our hearts, while it's still living and pumping blood in our uh, you know, being, you know, and also the thinking, the patterns, the motives and intents of it, it's still being played, right? Every single day when we wake up, right? So it's not only, you know, the pure in heart and then jump to going to heaven. No, we are going to have and make it work it with God with our own heart. God is crying in on Paul with in the with the Israelites about about how they are so stubborn and stiff naked you know seen up in the Bible that's what the Bible says stiff naked stubborn hearted Israelites that he said I chose you to be a nation and yet my hand is always reaching out to you but you re always reject it when I read those you know the Bible sometimes when I read it it's like there is this like, you know, the word is really speaking up to my own heart. And you would feel God's heart when you are alive in the spirit. You will know that God is really speaking to us. So here we go. And let's move on. So pure in heart, 
Watch this. So here in this verse, Jesus already revealed to us how we will be blessed to the point of seeing God ourselves. There are two things that was mentioned here. One is how do we see God, right? How do we see him? And what does it really mean to have a pure heart? Maraming Christians, they don't know if they have a pure heart. Actually, some of it, you will see them online. Don't you know the FB, social media, somehow when they, you know, post something there, the heart is revealed, you see. And if your heart is not pure and you post something which is absolutely not from God, then you are actually defiling. You have a means of defiling the media and people who read that will come to you in defilement, especially if our hearts are not pure. Did you know that? How powerful we are in the spirit. And that's why the Lord wants to deal with the issues of our hearts as being his disciples, because this is the one of the things that he addressed of the Beatitudes. And they call it, some scholars will say, Beatitudes. What should be the attitudes of many of those of his followers? This is the first preaching sermons long preaching sermon in the Mount, you know, uh, I forgot the Mount, but the, the Beatitudes it was a long scripture, uh, scriptures and also the blessings that goes. So he is actually explaining about the kingdom living and part of that Beatitudes, which is in, found in Matthew 6 and of Mark, John and Luke, right? Especially in Matthew, Mark and Luke is this part of pure in heart. Maraming Christians, they cannot see God. And you know, when we worship God, you know, sabi, where you only, the Father seeks only those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. You lang pinaka element how you can worship God. And so, if you are in living in the spirit, worshiping in the spirit, God is speaking to the condition of your heart. So, when we worship God, in purity, right, then we are able to be blessed. You know, ang ganda nito, blessed word na ito. You'll find it. And this is what God is actually addressing the, the, you know, the Beatitudes when it comes to being blessed. So here we go. Both Old and New Testament, Lord reveals, he looks and watches the heart. Did you know that? Okay, let's have a look on 1 Samuel 16, 7. This is an account where Samuel actually was picking all the, you know, brothers of David. And then God says, no, not one of these brothers. I want you to anoint, you know. And then he goes and says this to Samuel. And then inquiry of David, which is the youngest, who is in the field watching the sheep, you know, he was called. And there he goes. God anointed the heart. Of David. God anointed the heart that he sees that will be running after him because God sees the future of someone who is going to be pure in heart. So this is by Samuel 16, 7. It says, But God told Samuel, Looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. This is King Saul. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and wo women look at the face, but God looks into the heart. Amen? So God looks into your heart and mine. And that is where it is being tested by God, who seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. And David was a worshiper. Even though he was a young boy, he always worshiped God plays guitars, and so God knew that David is in connection to him, even though he's a young boy and away from all the norms of life with the brothers serving in the army, all right? So here we go so again that Jesus reiterated about the heart, okay? So God the Father in the Old Testament told Samuel, I look at the heart, and Jesus said that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, amen? So let's move on. So now you know the requirement, okay? Heart on the Old Testament, heart in the New Testament. Jesus actually focused 
and says, come on, you know, deal with your heart. Let it be pure before me, and then you will be blessed. If we do have a pure heart, we are blessed. Amen? That's what the message is. And in Greek, you know what this blessed means? And this is what I love you to understand is it is in the word makarios or makarios. It means those who lived in another world far from the problems and worries of others. Amen. And the next one is this. They are free from earthly cares and struggles. Right? So kahit ano mangyari dyan, God, you and you are said, blessed, makarios, especially in this verse. That's the Greek word. You are far from, different from others in the struggles and earthly cares. And in Hebrew, it is baruch or barak for blessing, which means to kneel or to praise God. So these two meanings, right? But in this Matthew 5, 8, 6, 8, is makarios. It is not the one that is barak or baruch, which is for blessings, which is to kneel or to praise God, right? But same things are very vital for us to understand. To kneel means to worship. So that is also another thing that we have to know about blessed. When we worship God, we are blessed when we worship God because kneeling means worship or bowing down. So, tandaan yun, remember that, makarios, you are blessed, big sabihin, you are blessed above others, above all the earthly struggles and cares. Amen to that? So, get this now before we begin our topic and move on. The next one, God's people have seen God, let us pure hearts. Let us see the account of Jesus in his time. Who are these people and really have seen God themselves? physically and spiritually. Peter, James, and John saw Jesus in the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw him with Moses and Elijah. Jesus was not absolutely yet in resurrection here. He was not yet in the glorified body, but he went up with uh, it, his, his, his body was transfigured in the Mount, right? In the Mount. And then uh, Peter, James, and John saw him with two people, spirit-filled leaders, servants of the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah, right? The law, Moses, and the prophets. So they saw God. They saw Jesus. They were blessed to have this, you know, moment with God. The next one, physically, huh? physically, they saw him. And then Stephen saw the glory of God. We'll, we'll go through those scriptures later on. So this one again, where they, they saw Jesus, God himself, when he was being stoned, all right? Next is Paul in a revelation saw the third heaven. So in the third heaven, that's where the father resides or is in, in, in throne. And he saw also Jesus sitting at the right hand of God there. And then John saw God on his throne in the vision, okay? John saw God in the vision. Later, those who maintain pure hearts before God will see him face to face. All of us, when Jesus comes, we're going to see him face to face. That's the final glory of seeing God. The next is today, many of his pure hearted saints have seen God in dream and vision encounters. Did you know that there are a lot of records of people, TikToks, YouTubes, and all the social medias. And they have, you know, explained or shared about that they see God. They saw God. They see Jesus, especially those who death experiences. They see, saw God. Okay. So how? Because God wants to be made manifest, but he most of all makes manifest to those who are pure because all of these people you know they have an account that they really do have pure hearts following jesus so let's have a look a lesson of listening so this is what happened with peter james and john the faithful followers of jesus it says there in verse 2 there he was transfigured before them his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as the light 
just then appeared before them, Moses, Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. And again, the Peter, the show off. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Okay, so they saw it physically. Jesus was transfigured with both Moses and Elijah, and they talked to one another. Okay, so that's what they saw. They saw God. Why? Because you know what? They are followers of Jesus. They continuously, in this Matthew 17, it was more of like years now that they are following Jesus in his ministry. So Jesus gave them a privilege to see him in a different setting of the spiritual. See, that's a blessing, right? So you're far above the norm of people's thinking and experience. Okay, when you are pure in heart, this is one of the things. The next is Acts 7.54. Verse 60, where it says about, uh, you know, Stephen, this is Stephen, you know, um, you see, this is verse 56, uh, verse 55, let's hear this. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. When you saw the glory of God, you see God right there and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. What's the, what's the word when before he see it, it says full of the Holy Spirit. That's purity of heart. It is like your heart has been approved, ticked by, there's only one audience and there's only one who can always, you know, you know, assess it accurately is the Holy Spirit. So that, that's a privilege of this, just these people. You know, when they are in pure heart, you will see God. God will manifest his glory to you. He's both seen God the Father and he's both seen Jesus at the right hand of God. But then, you know, his heart is still pure. Even though while he was being stoned, he still cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. So that's another thing about, you know, when your, your heart is, is still pure at the end of the road. Your heart has not been tainted with sin. Your heart is being carried by the heart of God. Your heart is God's. And so, you, you know, God, Jesus even said this also. Remember that? Father, forgive them, but they know not what they do. That's the same thing that Jesus said when he died on the cross. So same thing, Stephen mentioned that because of the purity of the heart. That in spite of the odds, he saw God, he saw the angels, and he saw the Father. So let's move on to the next with Paul. Now, Paul, sabi niya dito, I must go on boasting. Although there's nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. You know, when you talk about visions and revelations of the Lord, you see God in those visions. And God's speaking to you when you talk about revelations. He's speaking to you as in a friend. He talks to you privately of the secret things you need to know about him and the way you go and everything that you need to know. That is what Paul has experienced. And he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or other body, I do not know. He was saying that even though I am in the body and I'm conscious of it, only God knows, but I saw this man, right? Long before he, he was actually uh, called. And then he says he was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. Another thing of that blessed meaning, there are things that will be given to you and you will hear it. And then you can only understand it and you must not tell it to others because they will not understand you. Because it's a secret thing that God reveals his heart to heart to his faithful servants and faithful children of his. I'd like to really stay there in the purity of the heart. That's the reason why, even though you are on trials, you will actually, when you have all these visions, these revelations of seeing God, 
you know, the things that are of the world doesn't, it becomes little thing to you because you know that you have a personal encounter with your most holy father, most of all with your savior, Jesus Christ. That's the reason why that it's the one that's encouraging me all the time. You know, like, yes, I may cry with the pressures because I'm still human being with all these emotional, you know, uh, feelings that needs to be expressed. But nevertheless, because of the many encounters I've written and my family knows, especially brother Oji knows, but that I will wake him up when God speaks to me, showed me visions, showed me what kind of car should we buy, showed me a lot of things about my family, showed us where we should go to mission. All these are but things that actually God reveals his heart to you where you should go. And it's so, so beautiful because it's a personal guidance of your father teaching you where to go. So beautiful. And I hope that we will understand what it is about seeing God and what it is about being having the pure heart and be blessed. And the next one is John. You see, John also has seen God. He's not dead yet. It's a revelation of the vision that God gave him. So then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the former heaven and the former earth that passed away, this was the revelation. He saw the future. It has not happened yet. In his time, but it's going, it's now unraveling today in our time. He died long, many centuries ago. And so this has been a vision given to him. And he saw Jesus himself riding in a horse. Many things in Revelation was given to him. That's why the book of Revelation is all the things that he sees God will do and is doing right now for the sake of his people. That's why Jesus, you know, you know what we love about Jesus when you are prayer, pure in heart? He prepares his people right before it even happens. That's the beauty about seeing God in your visions and dreams. And that's the reason why he says you're blessed. If you are a pure heart. Because he reveals to you secret things that will be of the future. And I've seen God that Holy Spirit is the medium. It, he is the one who really brings the very message from the throne of God himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit goes, works together, and speaks their very heart towards us. Very, very personal. And I love that about God. And that's the reason why I continue to speak to my heart. If my heart is unwell or if my heart is being attacked, I speak to my heart to continue to be pure before God. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I will be blessed. And I know I will see God. And I hope you will see God also soon. Okay, to see God means, this is a the thing. They literally saw him. Went up to heaven. Peter, James, and John were faithful followers of the Lord. And the reason them three were only chosen to be with him in this experience. They even saw Moses and Elijah with him in the clouds. What? an experience, right? Because they're faithful followers. Their heart is following Jesus in many years already. In fact, suna yung pagkamatay niya dito as a Matthew 7. So another one is Stephen full of the Holy Spirit. While being stoned, saw the glory of the Lord and Jesus at the right hand of God. And while being stoned to his death, he even cried out forgiveness with them while killing him. He still is at the end of being, you know, being in death, stoned to death, right? Lahat ng bato, pinukok sa kanya, lumapit pa nga eh. And then also took his garment and brought it at the feet of Paul, who is not a Christian before. You see? But while he's, he's dying, he still has a pure heart. Amen? Can, can we be like this? Or are we prepared to even at the point of death, we still are carrying the purity of our hearts. Next, Paul saw third heaven. Again, saw God's glory. He has been given many revelations and visions, but opted to always keep it to himself to avoid being conceited and also be ridiculed. This is Paul. You see, people who are in pure heart, following heart, the Bible says, 
I follow hard after thee. This is what David says. No other David, again, was called after man after God's own heart because he followed heart, hard after God's own heart. He followed God hard. These people followed God hard in their hearts. They follow hard after God's own heart. So John saw in a vision new heaven and earth. And so Jesus will wipe away tears from my eyes when we see him. He saw him in the future. See, this is a thing about blessed are the pure in heart. And they will see God. See it not in the normal condition of our eyes and the way we are viewing things outwardly. This is internal purity before God. The spirit that carries our own spirit. That also speaks and minds what's in the soul. Amen. Next, today many have had encounters of Jesus, seeing Jesus, and offering them salvation. Some also seem like manner like these people of God in dreams and visions. Lord wants to be seen and known. There are many now that they have personal encounters. But Jesus wants to reveal himself, especially in the Middle East, where he's not being introduced in those countries. But nevertheless, Jesus showed forth himself so that they will be saved. But the next one, too, is also there are people given dreams and visions, right? Don't negate those dreams, those visions you have, because those are messages that God is bringing one little by little, step by step into your life. So you will know how to navigate your walk with him. Amen. So that is what we call seeing god that's what the means of seeing god so jesus checks and exposes hearts jesus commanded nathaniel an israelite a man with whom there is no guile you know what we talk about no guile this is what it means no cunningness just to get your way right no deception hindi ka doble cara all right hindi ka nandadaya you're this and that. You're this and that, right? You are settled in your heart, where your heart, God is talking to you. Hindi ka doble cara. You know where God is speaking to you and you do it because that's where you are actually receiving from God. And you just discard everything that gets in the way because you know that you are not in deception. Another one is no duplicity, double-mindedness. James says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Somehow we'll have to figure out if we serve Jesus or our friends, if we serve him or our families, if we serve him or our spouses. Okay, put Jesus first and make our hearts pure, our all our fears before him as no guile. Walang makikita sa'yo. Pero, you know, some people will actually see you as with guile with their own eyes because their hearts are not pure. That's, that's also another thing. If the hearts are not pure who says to you about things that are not pure and it's not you, then you know where it's coming from. It's coming from the Lord, right? They are also operating in the impurity of the heart. So let Jesus assess you because here, Jesus sees Nathaniel. He has not met him yet, but he knew that he's going to meet him because he knew everyone who has pure hearts. That's why he commended Nathaniel amongst the disciples, with even without even meeting him. It's a beautiful story about him in John 1:47. Next, Jesus exposed the real issues behind the good words from a subtle, wicked heart of Judas regarding the oil poured on him did you know that he did not really truly care the bible says this he did not truly care for the poor but was a thief from the beginning since joining jesus a discipleship and grooming okay so what so the scenario here if i may say to you and talk to you is that you know when, when mary has actually broken the perfume and put it on the feet of jesus you know what you know, it was a one year's wages, that kind of special perfume. But nevertheless, Mary offered it because 
He knew that that's how special, that's how pure Jesus is. And so that, that expensive perfume doesn't matter to her, just to offer it. So that Jesus' fragrance will just fill the room that he has got the most gentlest and the most loving person that he, she has met. But Jesus knew also Judas who commanded, oh, it should have been, you know, sold for 300 denarius, right? But you know what Jesus said? He didn't even say it, but he mentioned it to himself. Judas is actually a thief from the beginning. So Jesus knows that. Next, Jesus exposed the Pharisees about their clothing, their faces when fasting, their arms, obedience to the laws, and tithes, yet inside are like whitewashed tombs full of deadly bones. Did you know that? All of those religious leaders doing all the religious activities and service to people, Jesus actually examined them in the heart and they are just fakes. In fact, they have addressed them as hypocrites and foxes, right? And also Satan's uh, uh, sons. Because, you, because you know, he says, you are of your father, the devil. That's how he sees and talks to them about what he sees in the spirit. These people, nobody in those times will be, Jesus was alive, escapes his scrutiny. You know, the Holy Spirit is not there yet because he was operating physically on ground in the earth. But nevertheless, every single people that he has encountered, he knew what was in their hearts. And Jesus catered to those that are of pure heart, of pure asking of faith, those pure faith. And then he connects to those kinds of people. And so next is Jesus taught many thousands. One day, 4,000 he fed. And yet when he was about to say the scriptures about you, I came here for you to drink, drink of my blood and eat of my body as bread. Oh boy, many people have actually, what kind of gospel is this? This is insane. He's, a, he's crazy. He's cuckoo. And then they left him. Because Jesus was speaking spiritually, and they don't understand. And so these people who doesn't understand from the heart, in the spirit, just negate what Jesus' words were. Then it's about communion with him, continuous, loving, serving him. So, yes, they left him, they mocked him, and then also instigate his crucifixion. So those people whom he fed with the miracle, the 5,000 and the 4,000, or more than the Bible says, because that's only counting men at that, at that time, they only count the men, the leaders of the home or the community, okay? They were the ones, after that account of him, telling about the spiritual, you know, things of the heaven, because, uh, you know, always some people that are spirit-filled, they think, they, they talk, think, and they say high above things that no one can understand. That's why you will understand Apostle Paul a while ago in the scriptures that the great revelations, he keep it to himself because nobody will ever understand. In, in fact, you will be construed as a cuckoo. But nevertheless, if you know that it, it comes from God, like Jesus has been on the earth, he never minds because he came to do only one thing, the Father's will. Jesus rebuked his disciples when they asked him to call fire from heaven to judge Jesus' enemies. Did you know that? You know that Jesus was actually, you know, uh, approached by the disciples, you know, by the enemies who was actually attacking them. And he says, Lord, can we just call fire from heaven and just burn all these people? You know, Jesus rebuked them, right? And those who also uses his name to cast out demons, their thinking is different because they're not yet spirit-filled to where Jesus is spirit-filled. So there's this normal attack, revenge, avenge of ourselves. Then Jesus has the capacity to assess and examine, expose our hearts. Jesus rebuked, we'll see that in the scriptures. Jesus rebuked Peter about coming against God's plan for his crucifixion, which he saw as the devil himself speaking through him. Did you know that in the scriptures, he addresses 
uh, Peter, you know, uh, as the devil that speaks to his mouth. See, that is the thing about blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God only. And also, they can also see what God sees, which is what sees in the spiritual realm. The things that are behind the spoken words of people, the eyes, the gestures, everything is being read by the Holy Spirit in the life of those surrendered women and men of God. They will see it. They will know it. That's the blessedness that we says about Makarios. For you're high above, far above the rest, the norm, because that is what Jesus has said in blessedness. Okay, so let's now move on again. And here is the scriptures. So let me read with you about the previous one where Jesus exposes and knows our hearts. So John 1, 47, it says, when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, here is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Wow. Did you know when you're called Israelite, you're bound by laws? And you know those laws are all in Leviticus. Those laws, this Nathaniel, Jesus was impressed because he keep all those laws. He was a pure man. That's why Jesus commended him amongst his disciples. Right next, for you are, this is for the Pharisees, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. That's what Jesus has seen with all those teachers of the law in the synagogue during those times. And one of which is Apostle Paul was also groomed right there before he was called. And did you see how Jesus in the purest of the heart sees someone who represents all these, you know, the services, all these things that makes you, you know, uh, authenticate, approved. But nevertheless, Jesus sees it. See, sees this thing about God. This is the thing about Jesus. When you are walking in truth, in the purity of your heart, he is actually seeing every scenario possible around you. And you are going to be protected. And, you know, all of them that accuses, oppress you, and also put a stumbling block on you, Jesus will always see them. Amen. This is how he scrutinizes. And now, even though he's not here, he sends the Holy Spirit as a witness to all of us if our hearts are pure before him. Next, Mark 9, 38, 40. Now John answered him saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name. Nagsumbong kay Lord na merong ibang grupo na nagka-cast out din in his name. And we forbade him because he does not follow us at pinigilan para dahil hindi naman sumasama sa kanila. Okay, but Jesus said this. Look at his heart. Do not forbid him for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is on our side. See, that's how Jesus, you see, Jesus said this, judge not before the judgment time. Kailangan di tayo nag-judge. All right? We always have to seek the approval of God. That's the only thing. But never leave judgment in the judgment day. Because we, if we judge now, we will also be judged the same. Did you know that? That's what Jesus has actually said. John 12, 6, Judas did not say this. Remember the, the, the ointment? The perfume because he cared about the poor because he mentioned it you know oh it was you know it should have been sold so that the money that will be incurred will be given to the poor and needy wow good words right but because he was a thief this is what jesus sees in him in that up you know you know just just interfering with what this woman has been giving jesus out of the purity of her heart towards jesus so as a keeper of the money bag, he used to take from what was put 
it. Siya na mismo ang nagdana ako na hindi akala niya, hindi alam ni Jesus. But because Jesus is a pure heart and always connected to God, inquiry of God day and night, every single morning, the Lord reveals the secrets who are with Him and around Him. You see, that's the beauty again. If you are, you know, have the purity of heart, Jesus will unravel the people around you to you and you will check them out and God will actually put them on hold so that they will not attack you or use anything against you. Amen. So Matthew 23, 20, I don't know, the other one, John 6, 60, 61. This is about, um, you know, Jesus speaking uh, with the disciples and he was speaking like a very high kind of spiritual stuff about eating my eating my body and drinking my blood <laughs> so it's come from nazareth that's what he's been known in the area and so telling that to his disciples to this crowd they all left him and look at this therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying who can understand it when jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this he said to them, does this offend you? He said, you know, when everyone is leaving, then he turned to the 12 and says, are you also going to also going to leave? And have you been offended with what I say? Because they don't understand. They might not understand what Jesus is saying. If there are things that are secretly given to those who are pure in heart that they see God just as much as personal as it should be. So Peter took him aside. This is when Peter was actually, you know, hindering Jesus to go to the be crucified for our many salvation of the world. So Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Lord, never, Lord. This shall never happen to you. You will not be crucified. You're not going to leave us. And then Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind, behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God. Watch those words, but merely human concerns. You see, those who are pure in heart that sees God, they know the concerns of God rather than the human concerns. Not about comfortability, but about doing God's will in the heart that makes it count for each and every one of us saints redeemed by the blood of christ you have to understand it because this is going to be tested in each and everyone's life today while we are going to approach jesus coming no longer as a savior but as a judge and i hope that we present him expose to him our pure hearts amen because that is where we will finally see him. And it's going to be very soon. So I am really, you know, every single day, I let the Lord examine my heart. Lord, what it is that I'm doing that is not in alignment with you. Let me not do it. Or what is my thought about this? Let me, Lord, you know, cleanse me from this. You know, always, always let the Lord examine the very issue of our soul. Okay, pure hearts. Blessings and reminders. I love all this. Okay, let's have a look. Those who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, they will receive blessing from who? From the Lord. And another thing, vindication from God, their Savior. This is what I'm saying. If your heart is pure, wherever you are, in classes, in workplace, in your houses, you will always receive blessing and you will be vindicated, but remain to be pure in your heart. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. See, God is looking for generations. God is looking for those who seek his face only, not other people's opinions. His face and his word is enough. And then confirmed, by those who are also walking in the purity of their heart when they also examine as the Lord for you. Next, Psalm 73, one, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean or pure 
heart. So God loves Israel so much that is their favor as a nation chosen by God. But also God loves alongside those Israelites the same love he gives to those who are of a clean heart. First Peter 1.22, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, do you love the fellowship, the brethren in the fellowship? Or you love the saints of God wherever they are? Love one another, what's this? Fervently with a pure heart. You know what? I can say this to you all, that I love you with a pure heart. And God knows that. That even though I would hear things, know things, God knows that I am for this fellowship and I'm going to mind it as the Holy Spirit will enable me to do so. And this is what I'm going to be uh, always be examined by God. Therefore, Galatians 6, 10, as we have opportunity, ngayon pa lang may opportunity ka pa rin. Do good to all people, especially, special mention, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. All right? Do you have family of believers somewhere? Be good to them. But those who really does not want you to, uh, you know, to have nothing to you, and that's the one you have, you have to leave them by their own will. They, they, they chose that, not to do anything, but you are there to continue to love them, but they don't want, then so be it, okay? But, but continue to love and do good to all people. Next, they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. You know, when we are going to have pure hearts, this seeing, you know, God, we will see his face, Jesus, and his name, tatatakan pa tayo sa udo ng Jesus. I saw in my dream one day about that, and Tito Oji knew about that dream, where I saw Jesus wrote his name on my forehead, right? Because, you know, when you really are intentional about following Jesus only, Jesus will reveal to you if you are his or not. Hebrews 12, 14 is another thing of my, you know, my, my uh, uh, consolation. Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. You see, pursue peace. Now, again, it's all totally yummy because there's two, uh, two, two people to tango, they say. So in terms of pursuing peace to all people, right, and with your holiness, you know, let them, but here you are, you pursue peace and you're holy, then you will see him face to face. So another last reminder is, so flee youthful passions, youthful passions, that means you know, you are careless before, you are unkind before, you have all these emotional, you know, wreck, wrecks and all that expressions. But you now pursue passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. And watch this, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. You seek those people who have got the purest of the heart. You see, I thank God that those people align with me above and seeing me because I maintain by God's grace, by his grace alone and by his presence that I am surrounded by amply good, I've been you know, grounded, built up in Christ's people. And I thank God for that because the more you pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, the more Jesus will bring you to all these people around you, which is going to be your uh, you know, your, your uh, also guard and defense because you are amongst the finest of the soldiers of Jesus Christ. Amen. So help to maintain pure hearts. If you're not having your pure hearts today, this is what you have to do. Let God be the strength of one's heart. That's set, found in Psalm 73, verse 6, 26. Let the peace of God guard our hearts. You pray all this. You need to pray and ask God for all this to help you think the right pure-hearted motives in life. Next, let Jesus' peace remain in the hearts because you know Jesus' peace 
will actually, you know, you, you will stand out in the midst of troubles. Because it says there, do not be troubled, for I am with you. Right? Next, let the Lord, not anybody, let the Lord examine our hearts. How will the Lord examine our hearts? Through the scriptures. And also somehow God will send the right spiritual people to speak to your life. Right? And I have those. I thank God. They are, I'm not listening to any just of my friends. They are the best kinds of spirit-filled Christians that hears God and is on fire for God. So, Lord, examine our hearts. Next, let the meditation, ano ba yung meditate mo? Of the heart be pleasing unto God. You see, when you meditate on things, on your heart, your heart is there. And when it pleases God, that's where you're going to go, right? So what is your meditation today? Check it out. Let's guard our hearts with all diligence and vigilance. Like every time you wake up, always keep in mind that you're carrying your heart with all its spiritual, mental, motives, and intents. Just carry it before God with all diligence and vigilance. Check if it is sound or not sound. Right, And the Holy Spirit will tell you what's there. And then watch this. The last one is, it's only the Lord that weighs the motives and intents of the heart. Check all the people around you, but most of all, check your heart. If their motives and intents is what? If they are on the verge of you know, sabotaging you, your reputation and your ministry and your life and your family, that is the one that you have to actually check out and let the Lord weigh all of it, your heart and theirs, okay? Because that is going, you, that is the one the Lord is going to direct you. Okay, here are the scriptures, some of it. The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Again, the Lord sees the heart, right? Or the ways of a man are clean and innocent, in his own eyes, some people, they think it's like innocent. Nothing is, you know, sometimes nagpapaka, uh, papaka innocent pa, right? And he may see nothing's wrong with his actions, but the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intents of the heart and knows the truth. Amen? So commit your works to the Lord. Ask him. Submit and trust them to him. If your plans will succeed, if you respond to his will, and guidance that's in an amplified Bible. And your plans will succeed. That means what you are doing in action is actually approved by God in accordance with His will and guidance. Wag kang gagawa na hula hula lang. Wag kang gagawa, most of all, ng quick judgment because when you do that, probably the judgment that you do, you will regret it for the rest of your life. You lost your calling. Because somehow in people's connections, there is a call and tell to that. Listen intently to what the Holy Spirit speaks to you, not what other people or circumstances speaks to you about. Next, Galatians 6.10, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who are the family of believers. Pure hearts involves the wholeness of the soul. That is what it is. The righteous integrity of both the mind, your thoughts mo, bantayan mo yan, because that's also part of your heart, the soul. The sabi ng Bible, the heart it has all the issues above all things. So guard it. Next, will, your actions. That is of the heart, that is of the soul. Dapat yung integrity nito will be aligned. And then emotions, your intents. What is your intention? Galit ka ba? O hindi ka galit? For goodness sake, but for peace, for love. That's what it is. With just one aim, which is what? Only to please God. All right? So, Kailan, it is always about pleasing God only in the integrity and oneness of the soul. Purat involves your mind, your will, and emotions run by the Holy Spirit to only please God and do the Father's will. Some of Christians does not really know how their soul operates in the kingdom. Because guess what? Their lives has never been 
weighed, examined before they because they never asked it. They were at the beginning of their Christian life as lazy and as, as not connecting to the Lord in intimacy. That's the reason why they are just these people who are job, double standards with duplicity, with cunningness, even though they call themselves Christians. And later on, they find themselves, you know, with the righteous judgment of the word and of the Holy Spirit as a witness that they did not make it because they have been actually playing up with the word Christian and their hearts has never been proven before God. That is of purity. Okay. Another thing about purity is from jo uh, Joseph Apostle Joseph Self. I love this about him. Remember how, you know, the apostles are uh, the disciples then that they were actually, uh, you know, the disciples are actually telling Jesus, you know, gumagaya to, they're copying our ministry and all that. Look at this. Do not wish for, ito lang yun eh, ayaw mo na silang gumaya, but do not wish for, nor anticipate, or even support the downfall or destruction of anyone, especially in the body of Christ. Meron na na-establish na ministry ang isang tao. And then here you are, there you are surrounded by people who wants to wish and anticipate and sometimes support the downfall of another ministry. Jesus is right there to rebuke you right now as he rebukes the disciples. And never celebrate or enjoy or even promote the pain of others. Some people have the tendency, like, you know, our we have a, an issue before. And the way it was played up is by, uh, you know, pretending best friend. But then all of those issues were spilled out and was, was used against out. These are the people that Apostle and even Jesus warned that you don't promote the pain of others because you never know what happened to any histories, to any, anything that's happening in their life. You're not there in their shoes. So this is what Jesus was saying. You only are meant to love, to pray, to encourage, to edify. And this is what we are going to do. And never even, you know, or to twist the words of people and then transfer that to another people. And these people be upset. And so you actually, on both sides, have defiled both. You actually have gossip to about the minister who's doing the job for God and the people that are lost and to now defiling the ones that you twist the words to and so that it will become likable for you and then destroy the other part of other people's lives. That is not come, that does not come from the purity of heart. Never, never in the body of Christ it is allowed. Jesus rebukes that. Jesus negates that. Jesus canceled it. So not so no to all of those things that is not in God. If God gives us a revelation about them, then if it is bad that they're doing, then we abort them. We abort those plans because the enemy is playing up in their lives. And we keep our hearts pure from all the judgment and anything that comes in the way. I am corrected by the Lord somehow. Sometimes the, the thinking will go different from the heart, right? And again, this reminders that Jesus weighs the motives and intentions of your heart. So therefore, I have to let the Lord seek out, Lord, what it is during the day that I said, did not say, or because sometimes when you omit things that you have need to say, you know, like sometimes there's a message that we need to deliver because there is this lie spreading. Somehow the Lord speaks to me, write this, write this. And the flow is right there, you know, because God speaks in this time and this season. And he uses you and I to post those scriptures, those truths that speaks volumes to the people that are dying and lost, okay? So here we go. Another one, pure heart means pure life. Guard the heart because it determines the course of one's life by Derek Prince. So if you have a pure heart, that means it will emanate pure life and guard that because it determines the course of your life. away from the faith. Or you are going to be destined for faith, faith after faith, glory after glory, fire after fire, Holy Spirit's anointing presence increasing 
in your lives. That is what we need to aim for, the pure heart and in spirit life. And if we have messed around, get involved with just confessing with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with the Father, because they're the ones who can actually, the ones only, allowed to forgive you and not man. Okay? And get back to hearing God and also knowing his words. All right. So complete meaning of Matthew 5, 8. And this is what it is about the whole study. Blessed, living far from the problems and worries of others, free from earthly cares and struggles, always in praise and worship of God, are the pure in heart. So you are blessed. You're far above others, the rest of the others, and you will see God. And what you will see God means is the assurances of continuous eternal revelations, manifestations, visions, and fulfilled promises that only God reserves to the few, which are the purest, the heart amongst his people. So that means you are seeing him in everything in our lives and one day soon. There is a constant featuring of God in you and speaking in you. And then later on, because you're faithful and continuously having that pure heart, the pure in heart will see God face to face. Amen. What a joy to see God soon when we are continuously having this pure heart. So let's check our hearts, right? So here's the acknowledgement. Okay, so again, complete meaning of Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. To end this is this. Blessed, living far from the problems and worries of others, free from earthly cares and struggles, always in praise and worship of God, are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Assurances of continuous eternal revelations, manifestations, visions, and fulfilled promises. Seeing him in everything in our lives, in all the facets of the spiritual revelations that is given daily to those favored ones. And then finally, we'll see him face to face. So God bless you, and I hope that you're blessed today with our message about blessed are the pure in heart, but they will see God. You know, think about your own heart now. Don't think about other people's heart. That's none of your business. Your business and my business is to check our own hearts because that is where the revelation of God will continue to flow between you and him. And boy, I tell you this, it is something that no one will see except you. And that is your navigation to a continuous walk for eternity with God. Nothing shall be withhold to those who love him in the purity of their hearts. Amen. We have seen how Jesus has shown himself to those few, most of all, to those who are full of the Holy Spirit. So God bless you today. And I hope you're challenged. And today is now the working out and the assessment of our hearts before God and the scriptures. Amen. Try it before you sleep and also when you wake up. Let God know what's in your heart. Amen. Let him examine it so that you will maintain the spirit of your heart. Because you will see God. Amen. God bless you. And this is now Sister Annie from Christ is the Head Fellowship signing off and thanking God for this opportunity that Lord is giving us liberty after liberty to share this online. And many viewers, you don't even know because I see it as the admin, viewers that have been impacted and they actually have told me, some of my friends told me that they are blessed with the message, you know, and that to God be all the glory for the things he has done. Thank you very much again and God bless you. And uh, may the Lord be with you today in this last weekend of a Sunday. May you spend your precious time with your loved ones. Let me pray. Father, thank you. God is Father, we thank you for this day. And let us, Lord God, be joyful. Even we are persecuted because, Lord, 
We know that if we maintain our purity of our hearts, it doesn't matter because we, we will see you. As these people are God, even in the death sentence of their lives, they see you and they know you and you know them. Lord God, what a privilege for those who are pure in heart to see you. Lord, we just pray that we will all continue to seek your face, just as you have said to David, seek my face. And also, Lord, what David prayed, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, let us be men and women after your own purest of the heart. Thank you, Father. We thank you for Jesus, that Lord, that has paved the way for our salvation. And one day soon, we will see him face to face. And you, Father, too. alongside with the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are in all of us. And you will speak to us. You will examine us. You will, Lord God, weigh our hearts with the motives and intents of it. Let us be united with you, Holy Spirit, in everything that you say, being the Lord in this season and this time, that you speak and unravel your heart about our hearts. And let us, Lord, be united with your heart, always, always in line with the purpose and the will of the Father. We bless everyone, Lord God, who will not only be hearers today, but will apply and obey your word. Because Jesus said this, more blessed are they who hears the word and keeps it. That means we apply and obey. We thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, Father God, and, and Jesus, and may the blessing of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace and mercy of our Lord be upon all of us right here, right now, and even forevermore until Jesus Christ comes and everyone says, amen and amen. So God bless you all. And thank you for this privilege for, for you know, staying uh, at this time for us listening to this message. I'm blessed. I hope and pray that you also have been blessed. God bless you. Let us check our hearts right here, right now. Amen. God bless.